for centuries, Islam has been playing a role in the life and culture of Tibet, and that Tibetan Buddhists and Muslims have been, on various levels, a mutual influence for one another in certain aspects of art, architecture, music, literature, and science. Today, two communities of Muslims live in the vicinity of the Barkor Plaza, where the central Buddhist sanctuary and pilgrimage center, the Jokang, is situated. Also found here are stalls displaying goods of all sorts. The Kache, or Sunni Muslims, originated from India, Kashmir, Ladakh, and Nepal. From the early centuries, they were integrated into Tibetan life. Also adjacent to the Barkor Market and Plaza is the mosque and quarter of the Chinese Muslim community, the Gya Kache. This second community was established in the early 18th century and their mosque built in 1716. It was, however, in the reign of the fifth Dalai Lama in the early 1600s that marked a change for Islam institutionally. A certain saintly personage, Pir Yaqub, was spotted performing his daily prayers upon a hill by the Dalai Lama. Following theological discussions between the two, a representative of the Tibetan leader was sent to an area west of the Potala where he shot arrows in four directions. That plot of land was bequeathed to the Muslim community and is known as the House of the Far-Reaching Arrows. The similarities and the commonness between Tibetan Muslims and Tibetan Buddhists are so much more greater than Chinese Muslims. Tibetan Muslims were within the family, the Tibetan family, like in the community of Lhasa. It's also written, it is, it's also said that the Tibetan Muslims are the ornaments of the city of Lhasa, you know, because it's, it's, not, it's not what we do or anything, it's, it's how, how we act, how we, um, how we carry on ourselves in daily lives. The, the difference uh, between Tibetan Muslim homes and uh, Tibetan Buddhist homes Architecturally, there aren't much differences because it's built of the same materials in the early days. Uh, but uh, inside, it, there's a big difference because uh, you don't see prayer flags around, you don't see um, images or thangkas or paintings. It's, it's a lot more simpler. You see things that are of daily use. You, know, you, don't, you don't see images of um, uh, Buddha or statues or you know, other gods. Oh, it's it's a lot more simple. Um, I think the only very ornamental things are uh, religious scripts in Arabic text that's around the houses, or probably um, prayer rugs and um, you know rosary beads like this. But the Tibetans also have Buddhist Tibetan beads that you know they carry with them all the time around their wrist, wrapped like this. Like today, if you were to go to Lhasa and you know you wanted to see the difference, well, everybody dresses up the same and things. But the, the main striking difference is this little prayer hat, you know, that you see everybody wear like this uh, after a Friday prayer, you know, with their hair tucked in all the way here, and they would walk around like this. The, then you would know this person is a Tibetan Muslim. The prayers are always conducted in Arabic, um, and. Uh, but within ourselves, when we, are pray, when we pray for ourselves in Tibetan, if I were to pray, I would say, Ya Allah, Nye Pamala Shapju Shia, Yakuta Deva Nimbun Tsol Ngal Doshu meaning I'm praying in order for you to grant me the you wish that I could serve my parents until their old age, you know, and, and things like that. You know, you would come up with your own prayers in Tibetan. All, all my uh, relatives are now educated in English schools, and um, we try and keep up our presence as Tibetan culture when we come home for the holidays, trying to, you know, uh, study Quran and the texts, and uh, just trying to keep, you know, keep the culture intact. It's, it's very hard, but. Um, your, your family is always, you know, there, yeah, we are this, we are that, you know, always telling you. So that's always behind your head, you know, behind your head. Like when I'm here in America, you know, I, I know who I am and I know who, what I am, but there's so many other things that I've got to take care of first. The bottom line is that, uh, well, I'm a Tibetan Muslim.